I'm Abby Day and this is Long Distance. Recently, I have not been coming round to visit. Instead, I stuffed my suitcase with excuses. It has been too long and I am always misremembering us. The clumsy firsts of youth we spent together, when you watched me gut the house of my possessions, when I'd finished and my life without you fitted into a car boot. I thought you seemed upset. Or maybe I imagined my profile in the Manchester Evening News, another millennial leaving town to pursue big dreams in the big smoke, an unfamiliar Piccadilly, a different O2. Manchester, I miss you more than I thought it was possible to miss an industrial skyline. When I read your name in train stations, I turn away to stop myself checking the platform number. So when I see you in the news, your face painted with suffering and resilience, I think, God, I miss this wonderful city of mine. Tony Walsh's voice declares, this is the place through the speakers in Euston station and London nods along in sympathy. It hits close to home to be so far away from you to feel a stranger in my anger at those who invade the places I associate with childhood and make them feel unsafe. When I talk, I feel my vowels expand. Slipping accents are inevitable, but I have London's tube lines tattooed across my speech. I'm better at directions here. And using Northern phrases has begun to feel like stealing. I don't call much these days. You are a distant acquaintance who has suffered a loss and it is no longer my place to comfort you. I tell myself it would be disingenuous to try. I called you last week. No one picked up. Photograph of Lowry at home. At the edge of the open door, brass-hooked trilbies crown the coats, emptied of the man. Further back, concealed by easels, he's figuring from his chair. Paintbrush raised as if in farewell, retiring in a crumpled three-piece suit. Gutted frames prepared like kindling wait for some fire. On the mantelpiece, the carriage clock ticks this time forever. Ascension. They rise, mountains on mountains, shimmering steel bolts blasted and glass running a liquid skin across the city's new rain-spangled bones. Uplift our tangled thoughts on cranes' red dots and shatter open the sky. Here is the new Manchester, racing, leapfrogging itself in a race to catch the sun. A race dead earth shall envy, a race for the gold of morn. Hello. My name is Estelle Price and this is my poem, The Spirit of Manchester, which takes its inspiration from the old Wellington pub which sits in the shadows of Manchester Cathedral. The Spirit of Manchester. So long ago I've almost forgotten who I was when timber from a ship first formed my ribs. A draper's shop, I'm told, full of pins and needles, ladies who bustled in from the shambles to get away from meat that dripped bloody mess into the street. In those hazy early years, I gave birth to a poet. There's a plaque on a wall that proclaims it. Byron, his name. Such a shame it wasn't Lord Byron. Who remembers John Byron, a Masonic mystic, who scribbled words into squiggles, invented shorthand. It's not exactly Don Juan. 
Even so, it wasn't long before I had a vocation. I've been the Vintner's Arms, the Kenyan Vaults, and at last, the Old Wellington, with cart horses bringing barrels of beer, a seat for the regular who didn't speak for 20 years, while upstairs an optician fiddled with lenses and dirty ears. It's true, it's not always been bliss. There was the Christmas blitz, when bombs fell like coins out of a drunk's pocket. Buildings blazed, and I prayed the missiles would skip me. And then, in the 70s, men in bland suits filled the air in Market Square with concrete. I believed they were going to kill me. Instead, they raised my body on stilts, drove a road through my bowels, built blocks of shops till grey was the only colour in the vicinity. For 20 years my bars thronged, drinks slopped, laughter stirred into anger, such skimpy clothes they wore even in winter, until one morning with windows full of sleep an explosion wobbled my rafters, brought dust screaming into my lungs. After all I'd seen, I refused to choke on terror. The men in suits returned, waved a planner's wand. Brick by brick, slates labelled with blue paint, they cradled me from the blast to the cathedral shadows. And there you'll still find me, creaky and skew with, pouring the strong spirit of Manchester into your glass. Thank you. Tony Wilson's Dream by Benjamin Francis Cassidy Opened May in 82 He'd built it Oh they came Saw the world within Setting everyone ablaze Closed down June 97 Lives never to be the same Atmosphere caught Made vision of the dream at first called flight of fancy just a passing craze open may 82 tony wilson built on it more more came never profiting financially it stayed a crazy scheme the dance remained cash vaporized the heady haze closed down june 97 a world made not to stay the same manchester Again soared back to global fame, the beating heart of the party sparking wild ways. Opened May 82, cemented now, from afar they came. Baggy trousers, tie-dye t-shirts, the soon established theme. Ravers drinking, dancing, revelling nights into days. Closed down June 97, no place could ever do the same. A fun house made, this church to music changed the game. Though the night out's done, the place posh flats, the song stays always. Opened May 82, Tony Wilson's dream, he built, they came. Closed down June 97, his disciples keep his hacienda's flame. Hiya. My name is Fiona Boylan and this is my poem called O oh Manchester. Hope you enjoy. I was born in one of ten boroughs of Greater Manchester in a fair old town called Bury. They like black pudding in these strange lands and I can count on my hand the different names they have for a bread roll. Do you want a cob, bap, bun, muffin or balm? This is all just part of Manchester's charm. My mother despaired the day me and my sister started school and these local kids defied every rule of the English dictionary. Whatever the ending of a name, the notes would always sound the same and I became known as Fiona, who spoke proper dead good like and went with hanging boys who gave me backies on their bikes on the streets of Salford. This city gave me balls to rival any man's. I never felt second-rate or too afraid to take a stand. 
and show there's a fire burning inside, like the brave Emmeline Pankhurst, who was born in Moss Side, where I spent my teenage years. So join me whilst I show you the sights. We'll get lost in Affleck's Palace, where they've got everything from cyber gear to legal highs. They've got the world's biggest flavoured jammy shop. And they play records that make you want to bop as you peruse the jewellery and grinders and more. But we can't stay long, so let's bounce and hop and walk the streets, admiring Axie P19's work. You'll be in awe. Next, do you fancy seeing a matinee at the Royal Exchange? <laughs> Wait till you see the inside of this building. Look up. It's insane. <laughs> and afterwards, we'll sit outside on Roman ruins in Castlefield and enjoy a tipple. And then, let's go see an exhibition at the Whitworth Gallery and go for a curry on the mile. And then, go see a band in Heaton Park. And afterwards, when it gets dark, we'll go to the Northern Quarter for a bit of drunken disorder, dance to New Order. And afterwards, maybe I'll even treat you to chips with gravy. I'm proud of these northern shores. In a town over 70 years ago that opened the hospital doors of the first NHS. It's where I've raised one baby and gone on to have another. This is the decision I made as a mother. To have my children be raised with their Mancunian sisters and brothers. And tell me of their mint time playing out with their mates. And I'll meet them at the school gates. And they'll ask me, do I have any scran? And they swear down, ma'am, they've not been causing any either. And what future do I see for my babies in this post-industrial town? I'm proud of its cultural heritages and opportunities for all. We unite in the face of hatred, strengthen our defences, stand tall. That'll surely be my taste of honey in this cottonopolis with my babies by my side. And with the northern man, they keep you on your toes, have a certain mank swagger, and the humour is very tongue in cheek. We like to drink in the Northern Quarter, Chilton, or Presswich at the end of the working week with a load of our mates. Yeah, this is Manchester, and we do things differently around here. We talk like no one's listening, and we love to chew one's ear. <laughs> our fair city has stood the test of time. A medley of music, football, cobble streets, oasis, Lowry, Morrissey, Turing, Rollsmeet and Royce, Dalton, Rutherford and Sunshine. And it'll keep on growing and creating greats and surviving and thriving and staying alive. Yeah, she'll carry on through it all. She's a waterfall. Manchester. It shrinks you to a comfortable size as you stroll beneath its clean, tall buildings, pismerised, out of sight of the sun near always, except when it stoops low near the end of the day and peers around the blocks like a giant sorting through his rows of books, looking for the right one. If he lights on you, it's lucky like he's got his torch out late at night to read and stumbles on you, finds you like the right place, you blush. But it's always at a kind angle, a glance across a table, not direct, as if he pauses between one lift of his pint glass and the next. You can sit on the base of a statue and swing your legs. No one will notice. They will just take it all in like you're a person in a painting, matchstick, part of the scene. This is the 200th anniversary of the birth of Engels. He wrote this book, The Condition of the Wooden Class in England in Manchester in the 1840s. We're in a hostel in the early 2000s, post our sectioning and a support worker says what do you need books for you're homeless we wrote a cycle of poems using lines from Engels 
written in Manchester in response. This one is, the war of each against all is here openly declared. Salford survivor Mary Burns opened Engel's eyes to workers and those unable even to. Edgeland's incendiarist with the inferno. Truth burns, love rages, Engels into free union for life and across Cottonopolis's 1840s pages of working slash underclasses. How much is learned? How much earned? Provoked to madness by the brutality of wealth. Hive's line seizing us in an early 2000s hostel after support workers. What do you need books for your homeless? And us burning to read them wrong. Across 13 years, lucky for some. Graduating, open uni and open degree. Heart attacked and three year back. Has nothing been learned? We've learned. And that, with love's raging, much can be turned. Love and Rage, Manchester. On this hot May afternoon. On this hot May afternoon. You make fun yet again of our yellow trams. Tell me there is no point to them. You lived, lived, in rush home. Land of buses, classes, student residences, squirrels and magpies, curry and doughnuts. You never came with me to the ship canal at Salford Keys to see the Canada geese, or to Chilton to eat halloumi burgers, see cherry blossom and a possible future. Now we are on our final journey to Piccadilly Station, your train. I will help you with your bags, books, plants, all the random stuff that a student acquires. I will bluff my way onto your platform where we will awkwardly hug. I will notice how green your eyes are and wonder if we look like a couple. This is about an event from January 2020, which seems a very long way off now. City Derby, second leg by Lou Crosby. It's a squash on the tram, checking the scarves, talking to rivals, the walk in the dark. It's joining the march or decked in sky blue, the glow from the roof that leaks to the sky. It's burger bar steam, pint pot stacked high, orange clad stewards, selfies with mascots, crisscrossing fans all going the same way. It's finding the gate or waiting in line, the arms out search, tall turnstar squeeze, endless corridor of open clothes. Betting slips and bars, line pundits on screens, hot dog and ketchup, meat pie and chips. It's a glimpse of blue seats, flashes of green. Finding the aisle, stepping down to the row, counting the seats, the shuffling along, nodding to neighbours, checking the view, the rows of faces lit up by the glow. The flood lit emerald jewel. It's a single word that starts off a chant, the single note to head thrown back song, the clapping in time, the oath till we die, for city stand up, armed high for hey Jude, the away fans chance, drowned by blue moon. I rise for the team, clapping each name, loud tannoy song, taken by the crowd. First whistle a cheer, a boo for the next, screaming opinion, shouting at the ref, each corner applause, each lost ball a groan, following the play, tracking every move. The willing, the stop breathing, the gasp, the head grabbing mom. The clapping, more cheers, repeating the songs, the shout for a pass, the stadium on the feet, the leap for a goal. Silence by the a R. It's the losing, but knowing that we're through. It's the analysis all the way home. Thank you.